Um, just a general reminder that, you know, 19 May is a Sunday and we are, and FCBC is the anchoring church. And maybe some of you, you ask your friends, hey, hey, hey can you go? And some of you, your friend will just straight away reject you and say, I, I can't go. It's a Sunday night. My, my family will not allow me to go. But I think there's a few things that you need to understand is that Monday is actually a public holiday. Okay, some of them, they just need to inform their parents that Sunday, it may have slipped their mind that Monday is a public holiday. And the other thing that you can do is that have a plan with your friend. That maybe together with a cell leader, you can tell them that, hey, they, we, my, my cell leader is an a, a adult. They will, he will meet us at this certain place and a certain time. So that I think it's good to give your friends some plan so that they can tell their parents. Because at the end of the day, I think your friends, you know, their parents just need assurance that they are safe. They know where they are and they know when they are coming home. I think that's a, something that you can do even with your friends, all right? Well, then turn to your friends on your left and right and say, hey, remember to plan and invite your friend. Can you say it louder? Remember to plan and invite your friend. And you know, two weekends ago, we started a sermon series called You Can. Say it with me, you can. Say it louder, you can. Hey, how come someone not loud enough? Huh? Okay, let me say this. Okay, let me. I need you all to repeat it again, okay? Say it with me, you can. You can. All right, that's great. And the you in the you can refers to God. And God can make all things possible in our lives that seems impossible. We can, you can, I can. Because Jesus has sacrificed his life for us. And the divine exchange took place when we believe that he died for us on the cross and shed every single drop of blood for us. And in this series, we're going to share with you that, that Jesus bled seven times on the road to Calvary and at the crucifixion as, crucifixion as well. And each time He bled, there is a spiritual significance. And the number seven represents completion. It's a number of completion. And He gives to us seven blessings that will complete our lives. And it's always a brand new life of victory. And every week, we're going to share with you a blessing in one area of your life where Jesus shed blood for you and I. And each time, it's a fresh blessing and a new breakthrough over the struggles for our lives. And that's why it's so significant that we'll be studying the seven times that Jesus bled for us. And indeed, the blood of Jesus has power over every problem every obstacles in our lives because the blood of Jesus is life. How many of you can say amen to that? And in the first sermon, two weekends ago, You Can Overcome, we spoke about the fact that in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus shed blood through His sweat because He was at the crossroad where of, it was at the crossroad of His life. There was a struggle with indecision. And that's why Jesus said that night, that not my will, but your will be done. And the blood that was shed once and for all and breaks every curse of indecision and every fear, every sense of intimidation in our lives and it sets us free from the pain of betrayal. And this is how we become overcomers and walk on with God. And that's why I reminded all of you that through Christ, that we do not need to be victims but be victors in Christ. How many of you can say an amen to that? Amen. And that's why this week, we want to talk about another instance where Jesus shed blood. And it's just so appropriate, right? A week ago, it was Easter. And the Bible tells us that Jesus shed blood on His back where he, when He was scorched, when He was flogged, when He was whipped. Can we just turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 27, verse 11 to 26? And let us read it together. One, two, three. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, Are you the king of Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at a festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. Okay, some, in some translation, it's just Barabbas. And actually, if you read through the entire scripture and different translations, you realize that Barabbas' first name is actually Jesus. Okay, which one do you want to release, me, uh, release to you? 
Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah, for he knew he was out of self-interest that he had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message, don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priest and the elders pursued, persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Can we just close our eyes and pray and commit this time to the Lord? Dear Father in heaven, we just want to commit this time into your hands. I pray that as we walk through this scripture, let your truth be illuminated in our hearts. I declare the Holy Spirit that you will just speak to every single one of us here regarding your truth that you have laid upon my heart. And I pray for our friends who's here for the very first time and who does not know you. I declare that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day where they will experience your overwhelming love, where they will experience a peace that they never ever experienced before here in this place. So I want to commit this time to your hands. I declare that I will decrease and you will increase. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say, Amen. You see, the Bible says that Pontius Pilate, okay, who was known as the judge of Jesus' trial, he ordered that Jesus be flogged with a whip. You see, flogging in those days was one of the most inhumane and most cruel experiences that any human can ever have. You see, the pain okay, is excruciating and it's, it's very torturous and the mental stress is so high that it is no less than crucifixion itself. You see, if you study the background, you will discover that with every blow, the, a person who receives their whip will have nine lashes. Why? Because at the end of every whip, there's actually nine ends and nine pieces that come out from one handle with that one blow. And, and this whip is also known as a cat of nine tails. Why? Because the end of each tail, end of each tip is a... There's, it's made out of metal and probably animal bones shaped in such a way that it is like a hook. So that when this bone or, or this lash is delivered on a body, can you imagine? The bone will cut deep into the flesh and when it is removed, it tears with it its flesh and the skin away from the bone and the blood that oozes out is incredible. You see, the Bible tells us that for the Jewish people to issue a death sentence is, is about issuing 40 lashes. But you know, for the Jewish people, if you give 40 lashes, I can tell you no man will ever survive. They will all die. And this is the definition of capital punishment. And because in those days they were under the Roman rule, they did not have the right to give death sentences. So they found a technical loophole, or I would say a technical legal loophole, was that they, since they are not allowed to give 40 lashes, they will punish someone by giving 39 lashes. But in effect, it is like a death sentence because technically, no one can ever, ever survive 39 lashes and still live. And if you read from 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24, the apostle Paul suffered flogging as well. That's why he says, five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. And this is how we infer that Jesus actually suffered 39 lashes. And our Lord Jesus Christ was sentenced to flogging not by the Jews, but by the Romans who do not have this legal limitation. And Jesus' back was totally destroyed and blood was all over the place. And it is clear from Scripture. Look with me through Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 to 5. The Messiah was prophesied to be doing this and this is what the prophet Isaiah said. 
and that prophet Isaiah wrote this 700 years before Christ. The Bible tells us from Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 to 5 in the NKJV version, Surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem Him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions, He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon Him, and by His stripes we are healed. In the New Living Translation, it says, Yet it was our weaknesses He carried, it was our sorrows that weighed Him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was bitten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. And today, as we look at this scripture, we need to ask ourselves, what blessing does the blood that flows from Jesus' back bring to our lives? And the blessing, and today I want you to know that the blessing that comes from the blood of Christ scourging, is the blessing of God's healing. And that's why today's sermon is entitled, You Can Be Healed. Why don't you turn to the person on your left and say, You can be healed. And turn to the person on your right and say, I can be healed. And today I want to share with you two areas of healing that we can experience. Alright? Through the blood that flows from Jesus' back. The first healing that you will receive is physical healing. And it tells us that God heals our diseases. You see, it is a promise that God has given that He heals all diseases, all diseases. Because in Psalms 103, the psalmist says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who heals all all your diseases. See, the provision for physical healing is found in the suffering of Jesus in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. So by His stripes, we are healed. By His wounds, we are healed. He was whipped so that we can be healed. And I want, I want to point us to Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4. If you read in verse 4, it says, Surely has borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows. And carried our sorrows. You know, there are sectors in the Church of Jesus Christ today that, that say that the word sorrow is actually sorrow. Okay? To us, we know that sorrow means either distress or disappointment. But that word sorrows, okay, here in Isaiah 53, can be converted, can be translated as sicknesses. You see, it is within the Hebrew text to do that. But I want you to know that there are Christians who believe, that, who say that this word sorrow, it just means sorrow. It does not mean that God can heal us physically. It does not mean that God can heal us of all our diseases. But I want you to know that this same verse was quoted under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in the book of Matthew. Who re and Matthew, he recorded the miracles of healing and, and instead of quoting the Hebrew text, Matthew, he quoted from the Septuagint, okay, which is actually the Greek Old Testament. Okay, if, you, if you find out what is Septuagint, it actually is a Greek translation of the Old Hebrew uh, Testament, Old Testament of the Hebrew. And I want you to read from Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 to 70. It's very interesting. It says, When evening had come, they brought, him to, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. This is what Matthew wrote. He took from Isaiah 53 verse 4, from the Septuagint, which is the Hebrew, which is the Greek Old Testament, and you see, by the time of Jesus, if you, read the, and if you go and do a deeper reading of the scripture, you begin to realize that by the time of Jesus, most of the Jews, they don't speak Jewish anymore. Okay? They don't read the Jewish language anymore, just like how many of us, we don't read Chinese anymore. Am I right to say that? And that's why the text needs to be translated. Because they spoke either Aramaic or Greek. And that's why the Old Testament in the days of Christ 
was translated into the Greek Old Testament instead of Hebrew Old Testament. And, and Matthew, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he quoted from the Septuagint, where the word that is used is sicknesses or disease. And he reads that Jesus was doing miracles of healings. And that's why if you read in Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, he wrote, He took our infirmities and carried our diseases, bore our sicknesses. He didn't say carry our sorrow which means really sorrow, but the sorrow in that, in, that, in that meaning is translated as sicknesses. And today I want you to know that physical healing is the blessing that you and I can claim by the blood of Jesus. It is a blessing and promise that we can apply when we lay hold of the blood of Christ. And today, if you do not know Jesus, let me say this to you. God promises healing in your life because He not only died for you, He died for your sin, but on this side of heaven, He promises you physical healing. He promises you that He will heal all diseases in your life. And right now, I just want to read to you, you know, uh, the testimony of this guy called Jason Ong. All right? And, and later, I, as I share with you this, you might be interested to know who he is even more. Okay? Because... He's pretty near us in this place. Okay, let me read to you right now the testimony or the healing testimony of Jason Ong. Barely three years after getting married in 2001, Jason Ong was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And the type of brain tumor that he had was so rare that he was the only reported case known in Singapore and there was only 50 such cases in the United States. There is no known cure. He went through 20-hour surgery and the doctor told Jason that he had only six months to live because the tumour had already spread to the main artery in his brain. So if you look at the picture, it is him in the hospital. And after six months, the doctor was surprised that Jason is still alive. And at a point in time, God told Jason to go to the nations and glorify his name. And Jason said this, It was a bit strange because if I am healed, then I can say, Oh, hallelujah! God healed me and now I'm going to share the goodness of God. But I told God, I'm not healed. What am I going to share? And the Lord told him, just go. So Jason and his wife Judith dug into their savings and the first country that God sent them to was Pakistan. They have a daughter by the name of Joel who had special needs. Jason had no idea how or what to communicate with the people there but the Holy Spirit took over. And Jason was led to share his condition despite having cancer, having no cure and not much time left. He still chose to stand and say that God is good. And many of the believers there in Pakistan who faced great persecution were encouraged. And in those years, they began doing various humanitarian and mission work in different countries like Philippines, Myanmar, China, Indonesia, and even Malaysia. Most of it was ministry to the hungry, the poor, the widow, and the fatherless. And in order to finance the missions, the Lord led them to open a Western food store called Olive Vine in a food court in Bugis in 2007. Neither had any experience in cooking and, and he did not know how to cook so he, all he did was just stand in front of the, the, um, in, in the kitchen and ask God how to, how to cook and God downloaded to him how to cook. Okay? So that's how he did it. It's very interesting. That's, that in itself is a miracle, I find. And it was not long before the symptoms returned. And that same year, he felt pain and nausea and this time a different doctor attended to him. And the doctor told him, that if the doctor had the tumour, he would cut it all, even, that would mean para, para, even, mean, even if it means that he was paralysed, even if it means that he has to feed through the tubes and not able to speak. And there was an option that Jason did not wish to consider because if he were unable to speak, he would not be able to share the gospel, teach or preach, and, and, or do the ministry work that God had called him to do. And that's why the doctor said to him, if you don't plan to do anything, there's no need to come for checkups anymore because you will die. The tumour will grow so big that you'll push your brain out of the brain cavity and you'll bleed from your eyes, nose, mouth and ears and you'll collapse and die. Basically, basically in Chinese, qi kong liu xie and just die, okay? And his reply to the doctor, if I have to die, so be it. So Jason reminded his wife to trust in the Lord and continue working hard in the food business and mission work. And he worked as a hawker for 12 hours a day and it's not easy for a dying cancer patient. He was hot in the kitchen and there was smoke all around. He was constantly tired because of the pain in his head. He took higher and higher dosages of pain medication. And that's why the wife said 
that she will continue to support him in his decision to not go for surgery, even if it means that, even it means that she worries and fears for him as a sick person who worked hard day and night and going to countries that are so dangerous. And that's why the wife said, if he's going to die, then all the more I can't stop him from doing what he needs to do. So, and as so Jason said this, I, I asked God, wouldn't someone who is rich or healthy be more effective in the mission field? But if this is your will, I will go, said Jason. And Jason continued to work tirelessly as he saw purpose in, in suffering to provide for the orphans, the widows, and the fatherless. And there is still blood coming out and there's still pain. And Jason said this, but whether God heals or doesn't heal, it is still hallelujah, praise the Lord. Even if I have to die, he's still Jesus and nothing will change that. And in December 2012, Jason felt that it would be his last birthday. His wish was to go up to the school in the mountains in the Philippines and watch the children eat. And his wife accompanied him and they celebrated his 41st birthday there. By January 2013, he had become so weak that he was bedridden and awake only to two to three hours a day. And he began reminding his wife that he would be going home to God soon and told her not to be angry with God, but to be remain faithful and continue to serve others. And that's why Judith had a very trying time. She actually kept crying several times a day, whether it's in the kitchen, whether it's at home. And at that point in time, Olive Vine had expanded to five outlets, and that was why God led them to close down all except for that one at Marina Square, okay, which is very near us. Okay? And once... The wife saw customers at the front and, and staff in the kitchen in the back and she did not know where to cry and she just kept crying in front of the chiller and, and tears rolled down her cheeks hoping no one saw. And as Jason Ong lay on his bed dying, his wife Judith was filled with pain. And one night while he could not sleep and was crying and praying all night long, Jesus appeared to her. He held me in his arms like a child and patted me and told me that all would be well. The next day, Jason told her he had a similar encounter with Jesus where he told him, I'm moved by the tears of your wife. I will heal you. And the couple did not have much time to process what the visions meant. And ironically, the pain in Jason's head intensified. He called his doctor to ask for morphine to die with dignity. And three days later, the doctor removed the tumour inside Jason's brain and cutting away most of the tumour that was outside his brain, knowing that he was a servant of the law who wished to teach and preach. The professor was careful not to touch the main artery of facial nerves. More than 80% of the tumour was removed and the surgery was a success. When Jason came out of the surgery, he was not able to see, he could not breathe well and was in tremendous pain. And, and he said that at a point in time, he felt so tired and it was the lowest point in his life after fighting with cancer for 10 years. And, and on a Saturday afternoon in March 2013, a day after the surgery was done on Friday, at around midnight, Judith was sleeping on a sofa in the corner of his hospital, woke up to the cries of Jason. And he was shouting, Jesus is here! Jesus is here! And he was trembling so much that the hospital bed was shaking hard, recalled the wife. And she quickly made her way to the bed, but halfway there, she was overcome by the presence of God. The weight of His presence was so heavy that she could not proceed forward and fell down on the floor. And in the presence of God, both of them could only utter the words, Thank you, Jesus. And Jason said this, I did not see His figure, but His presence was so strong that I got a glimpse of what holiness felt like and looked like. It was so holy and awesome that I cannot describe it in words. And he felt a hand touching his forehead and took a deep breath and fell asleep. And Judith saw him take that breath and return to the sofa to sleep. And the next morning, Jason woke up and saw his wife who was still sleeping on the sofa. He realized that he could see. He could breathe and he was no longer in pain. And attempting to walk, he found to his surprise, though even he knew he was not supposed to after gone through, having gone through major brain surgery, the doctor said he had never ever seen anyone recover so fast in his years of professional practice and this is a miracle. And by Monday, only three days after the surgery, the doctor agreed to have him discharged and he was healed. Can we begin to praise Jesus right now? Come on, let's praise the Lord. And if you look at, take a look at the picture of him, and this is very near us, we go down to the MRT station and you'll be able to see Olive Vine. To go and support them if you can. This is not a sponsored speech, but, but everything that they earn, it goes, a big part goes to the missions, all right? And if you look at him, he's still standing. And this is itself 
is a miracle. How many of you can say an amen to that? And today I want you to know that if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, don't accept any sicknesses. Don't accept any death sentences by any doctors. Doctors have no right over life. You see, we thank God for doctors. And, and, but we thank God for what God has used through them. But the life is in the hands of God and the ultimate healing comes from God. A doctor can't really heal. A medical doctor can only give medication that will put the body into a state where it will heal itself. But we all know that it's not the body that will heal itself. It is God that is at work in healing the body. You know, over the years as a Christian, for the past 10 over years, I have personally prayed for people and I see people healed. And one of the instances that happened recently was in Myanmar. It was very interesting. And I just want to share with you very quickly that I think just before I went for this trip to Myanmar in March, I was, I was supposed to go there and help this pastor teach, the, uh, help him, guide him, disciple him to teach the encounter. And what happened was this. The day before I went, he told me that he, he was really sick. He was at, he was at Kachin State, which is about two, ways, two hours away from Yangon. And he told me that he has acute appendicitis. And he was in the hospital. He took a picture of what the doctor wrote for him. And indeed, it was acute appendicitis. And he told the doctor, and the doctor wanted him to do to hospitalize and get him go through the operation to remove the appendix uh, in his body. And he told the doctor, hey, I have no time, okay? He needs to come back to Yangon. So he was in great pain. He came back to Yangon and I was really very worried for him. And I prayed for him, but I told him over Facebook Messenger, okay, I left an audio note, I say, I told him that, hey, please, the moment you touch down, the moment you come back, if you're still in pain, please go to the hospital. Okay, at least the doctor can monitor you. And he listened to me. Actually, he told me he didn't want to. He went straight in the hospital. He was hospitalized. So on that day, that day when I reached there, he was hospitalized. And the doctor had the same diagnosis. He had acute appendicitis and needs to go for an operation. And right, I remember that night after teaching live class, my wife and I, we went down to, to, the, op, uh, to the hospital to visit him. If you look at the picture, he was there. Or well, I can tell you, thank God for Singapore Hospital. The hospital there is terrible. Okay? And when I was there, I just... I just felt a level of faith rising within me to pray for healing over him. And when I was there, it was very interesting. The wife told me, Pastor, we pray for healing that he don't need to go for operation. I said, wow, this wife very amazing, you know. So we laid our hands over him and we begin to pray. And I declare that in the name of Jesus, the blood that flows from the back of Jesus is applied over him right now, over that the appendix, I declare in the name of Jesus, it will be healed. And I, we left that place. And what was very interesting was the next morning, he told me the pain left him. Okay? Actually, I thought that he would be going for the operation because he told me the pain shifted from right okay, to the left. I said, oh my. And I Google, oh, pain if shift from right to left uh, means uh, it's getting worse, must go for operation. So I say, okay. Let's say we pray for him. And the next morning, he, he called me. He said the pain left him. And then what happened was this, you know, the doctor just said that you're perfectly fine now, you can leave that place. And he got a shock of his life. And the people in the church also told me that they have never ever seen anyone who has acute appendicitis, was healed completely and can come back. Wow, oh, it's amazing. Can we just thank the Lord right now? It's amazing. And God can heal. And I remember back in, in, in Myanmar, I think th that time when we, when we had a rally, when we had a time of uh, harvest, when we prayed for pre-believing people, uh, the pre-believers who came, there were about 1,000 over people. There were people who need healing. You must understand that medical, the medical state there is, is, is very tough, it's very difficult. And I remember praying for people there, and I told them that if you experience supernatural healing, you need to come back to this church and thank God. And right after that, Week after week, there were people who came to this church and, and, and gave their life to Jesus because they experienced supernatural healing. And today, I want you to know that God is in the business of healing people physically. And God can use you and I to, to pray for people and, and to see them experience the supernatural healing of God. And that's why Jesus Christ, when He was on earth, one of his most prominent works was that he healed the sick people. 
And John the Baptist, who got his ministry started, was in prison, wasn't sure if Jesus was really the one who sent, was really the one who healed. He sent his disciples to check and ask Jesus about his ministry. And this is what Jesus said to him in Luke chapter 7, verse 22. So Jesus replied to the messengers, was supposed to bring the message back to John. Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. And Jesus told them to go back and tell John that this is the work of God. Because the work of God is not just to preach the good news that we will go to heaven when we die, but the work of God is demonstrated in the fact that we can experience supernatural healing in our physical body. Then the good news is about us experience the healing work of God in our lives. And I believe that we all know that health is one of the most important things in our lives. And let's face it, you can have the biggest house, you can have the most, you have the, it can be a billionaire. But if you do not have health, health and you only have wealth, there's no point. And that's why the health business is a multi-billion dollar business all around the world. And because we know that health is important, and I want you to know that there is no good news unless God actually comes and tells us that I died for your sin, I died for your sicknesses, and you can believe that God can heal you physically. And I want you to know that, you know what's the fact of life? The fact of life is this, the statistics okay, of death is very depressing. You know what's the statistics? One out of one person dies. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27, just as people are destined to die once, this is the st statistics of death. We will all die. But I want you to know that somehow, somewhere in our lives on this side of heaven, God promises there is a healer of our diseases. How many of you can say an amen to that? And today, later on, I want to pray for people who are sick physically. And I want to declare that there will be healing that will take place in the name of Jesus. And today, I want to ask you very quickly, how many of you are sick today? Put up your hands. Whether there's pain in your body, whether there is, uh, you have insomnia, I just sense there are some people here who's, have, who's having insomnia because you're feeling a lot of pressure in your life. And I just sense from the Lord that later on we'll pray for people who has some pain in your ear. Okay, we're going to pray for that. Are you ready for that later on? If you're ready for that, say an amen. Amen, amen later on. So that the first area of healing that God promises to you and I through Isaiah 53 verse, verse, 53, verse 4 to 5, it tells us that we can receive healing physical healing because God heals us of all our diseases that he was whipped he was scorched he was his, by his stripes we can be healed and there is the second healing that we, we need to experience which is the most important healing that you and I need to receive is spiritual healing which is the healing of our spirit because God heals our disease of sin you see, if you read in Isaiah 53, if you do a deeper study into that, it actually talks about two aspects of healing. One is the physical healing. The second is the spiritual healing that is provided by the suffering of Christ. If you read from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 to 24, it says this, To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in His steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in His mouth. When they heard their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins and in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. For by his wounds, you have been healed. By his stripes, you have been healed. Because he is whipped, we have been healed. And that's why this spiritual sickness is something that we need to be healed of. And this sickness is a sickness of having been strayed away from God. And that disease is a disease of sin because we are separated from God. And this is the disease of sin. And the healing is being provided by Christ and therefore reconciling us back 
to God and restoring our relationship with Him. That's why, that's why if you read from Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5 and verse 6, verse 5 it says, He was weep so we could be healed. And verse 6, what does He read? All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own, yet the Lord laid on Him the sins of all of us. We have all strayed away. That's what the Bible tells us. We are not just made out of body. We are also made out of soul. We are also made out of spirit. And the spirit part of us is the most important thing that is in us. And it is the most important part of us that needs to be healed. But right now, I just want to show you a video on body, soul, and spirit just to explain a bit more to you. Hello, this is Andrew Womack, and I'm going to be talking about uh, spirit, soul, and body, which may not sound the most exciting thing to you on the surface, but to me, this is one of the most exciting things that the Lord has ever shown me. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now that is so obvious. We are made up of a spirit, soul, and body. And the body is very obvious. If you go look in a mirror, that's the part that you see. Now you would be speaking to my soul, which is my mental, emotional part. Some people define soul as your mind, will, and emotions, and I think that that certainly is true. I don't think that it's all-inclusive. There's more to it. I believe that your conscience is a part of your soul. Your soul certainly includes your mental, emotional part. Uh, I believe it's what most people call their personality. If I was to touch your physical body, you can feel that. But I can also touch you by words, and it can touch your emotions. It can either make you glad or sad. It can make you angry. Uh, you can say words and hurt a person. So the body and the soul are two areas that every one of us are in touch with constantly. But the spirit part of us is a totally different matter. Jesus said this in John chapter 3 when he says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And there is no direct connection between the two. You cannot in a physical, natural way feel your spirit. The spirit cannot be accessed in any natural way, and herein lies one of the great problems in the Christian life. The spirit is the part of us that God communicates with, and the spirit is the part of us that all of the life and the power of God flows through. In James chapter 2, verse 26, the scripture there says, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. And that just makes it very clear that the life-giving part of you is the Spirit. One of the greatest keys to walking with the Lord, for me, has been to understand this reality of spirit, soul, and body, that the spirit realm cannot be seen or felt. The only way to discern what is spiritual truth is through the Bible to just take it and believe it. Jesus said this in John chapter 6, verse 63. He says, the flesh profits nothing. It's the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It's revealing to us spiritual reality. And if you want to know what your spirit is like, then you have to go to God's Word to find it out. You can't just go by an emotion, by some type of perception. You have to go to God's Word. Here's another passage of Scripture in James chapter 1, and in verse 23 it says, For if any be a hearer of the Word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. This is talking about a mirror. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, talking about God's word, specifically the revelation of the gospel, 
and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. This passage of Scripture is likening the Bible unto a mirror that you look in to see your spiritual face, to see what you are in the Spirit. You, with your eyes, have never looked directly into your face. You've always looked at a reflection or a representation, but you've gotten to where you trust that. Well, the Word of God is a perfect reflection of what spiritual truth is. You can't sit there and say, well, I think that, you know, all my mascara is on and that my face is fixed, my hair is combed, I'm ready to go. You can't go by how you feel. You have to go look in that mirror and then you trust what you see. Well, it's the same thing with the Word of God. The Word of God gives you a perfect picture of who you are in your spirit. And it's the only way. Turn the person on the right. Heed them and say, we are spirit beings. And hear the person on the left and say, we are not emotional beings. You see, you and I, we are spirit beings. The spirit is the deepest part of what we are and who we are. And that is the immortal part of us. And that's the part that is at the deepest level where God communicates with us. That's why if you look at the video just now, it talks about if your spirit has to be connected with the spirit of God, that's where the power and the life of God flows through. And we are all made to be possessed by the spirit of God, the most loving spirit of all the earth. But something has gone wrong. When we as men, we departed from God, when we say that I will live my own life, I will find my own God, I will be my own God, I will decide my fate. But the Bible tells us, for the wages of sin is death. The result of sin, the disease of sin is death. And death is separation. And that's why we are, if you do not know Jesus in your life, I can tell you, or you have strayed away from God. Your spirit is not connected with the Spirit of God. And that is, like, that is something like the power source. You know, it's being snuffed out. There's only darkness. There's no light within you. And, and I want you to know, if there is darkness within you, there is a spiritual vacuum within you. And I want you to know that every single person on earth looks for something beyond what we can understand, what we can feel, what we can act on. And I believe... That why is it that we all have this tendency? It's because deep within us, we are spirit beings. We are empty inside and we are looking for spirituality. And if you're a person here who hasn't trusted Jesus Christ, you're here because you're looking for spiritual reality. And the whole world is doing that. And especially here in Asian culture, we understand what it means you know, to, to know what is spiritual realm. Why? Why do I know that as a teacher? I know most of my students read true ghost stories, okay? True Singapore ghost stories. Somehow, deep within us, we all know that there is a spiritual reality. And the whole world is turning to new age. And the new age is about hunger for reality, for spiritual reality. It is more than that. Why? Because there is darkness within you. The light of God has gone out. There's a vacuum. And that's why all the more you need to allow God to heal you in your spirit and allow God to connect with you in spirit. And that's why, that's the reason why Jesus came and He died for us. And Jesus came and took the beating on His back. And that by scourging, by Him being whipped, we are healed spiritually. And today, the good news is this. To all our friends here who has not received Jesus into your life, is that today, if you receive Him into your life, the most important healing that we experience is the healing of your spirit. It's the, that God will heal the disease of sin in your life. No longer will you look within yourself, but you will look at someone who will guide you, who is beyond physical understanding, but a God who loves you and cares for you. And that is where you can truly be alive within you. And as of today, if you give your life to Jesus, 
I want you to know that today you'll become a child of God. And I want you to know that last weekend we celebrated Easter. Easter means Resurrection Sunday. You see, Jesus Christ not only died on the cross for us, if He died, simply just died, I can tell you, this faith is futile. There, is, there wouldn't be so many people who believe in God. But simply because three days later, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And when He rose from the dead, this tells us that He is a living God that is able to overcome death in our lives, overcome that disease of sin in our lives, that when we give Him our lives today, your spirit can be healed, your spirit can be connected with Him, and I can tell you everything that you see from now onwards will make sense because God is the creator of heaven and earth. And He wants to know you personally. And He wants to show you His plan and His purposes for you. And I believe that today there's many of us here who has been invited by your friends because they have been praying for you. And I believe that maybe you're facing a lot of pain and struggle, but today is the day of your healing. And, and listen, the Jesus who heals is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's ready to live in your heart. And right now, Jesus is at the door of your heart, knocking and saying, and saying to you, can I come in to your life? And today, if you say to Jesus, Jesus, come into my life, I can tell you, you will experience the most important healing, which is spiritual healing, the healing of a spirit, where your spirit will con be connected with God. Can I just have everyone to just close our eyes and to bow our heads right now? And maybe some of us here, we will be asking, Pastor, how do I receive Jesus into my life? And right now, I'm going to lead you into a time of prayer. And this prayer is specially designed for those who have not received Christ into your life. And all you need to do is to repeat after me word for word and line by line. And I, all I need you to do is to say it and mean it with all your hearts. And with that, I can tell you, Jesus who's knocking at the door of your heart right now will step right into your life. And this is the day of your salvation. This is the day where you will experience healing. And this is the day where you will experience peace that you have never ever felt before. And I'm going to say this prayer right now. And just follow me. And the rest of us here, I want you to say it as loud as you can so that, you know, so that our friends who's here with us will feel supported as well. So I'm going to pray right now. And I just need you to pray together with me. Dear Father in heaven, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I acknowledge that I, I go my own path. But today I believe in you, Jesus. I believe that you died for me on the cross. And today I confess that you are my Lord, that you are my Savior. Today I give my life to you. Come and heal me of my spirit. Come and help me to have a relationship with you. Help me to be a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. And with all heads continue to be bowed and all eyes closed, if that's who you are, if you have said that prayer with me for the very first time, at the count of three, I just want you to put up your hands as high as you can. And maybe for some of you, you have not said that prayer verbally, but you said it in your heart. And maybe some of you here, just in the recent week, you receive Jesus into your life in, at, at, at the cell group. And if that's who you are, and it's just somehow where you're seated, you just, just felt that you need to, to lift up your hands. At the count of three, I want all of you to lift up your hands. And I want to pray a special blessing for you. I pray a healing of your spirit right now. One, two, three. Lift up your hands as high as you can. Yes, I see your hands over there. Any more hands? I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, I just give thanks for the hands that's being raised. I just want to declare over our friends who's here for the very first time and who has given their lives to you for the very first time. I declare in the name of Jesus that today that they are your children and today that, Lord, that they will receive healing in their lives because their spiritual eyes have been opened to know that there is a God who loves them and has a plan for their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say... Can we just give praise to God?
Hallelujah. And friends, if you have said that prayer with me, just remember right after, after this service, go to the visitor's lounge and the friends who has brought you here will bring you to the visitor's lounge and, and there will be a, a pastor, there will be someone there who will be connecting with you to help you know more about what it means you know, to, to walk with Jesus. So young people, what are the two areas of healing that you experience? The first healing that we experience today is physical healing because God heals our diseases. And number two is a spiritual healing. Why? Because God heals our disease of sin. And before we go into a time of praying for healing over people who are sick here, I just want to show you a quick video about this guy called Todd White. Okay? He goes on the street and prays for healing for people. I want you to just take a look at this right now. Hey, out of all these, all the people here, do you know anybody that has any kind of pain in their knees or their ankles from sports? Did you? From sports, what, what? any problems with ankles or I knees from like football? I have you. You do? Yeah. All right, watch. Let me see. Come here. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Check. See. Let's go. Give me yes. two. Give me Thank two. You. Yeah. Bless you. Give me two. <laughs> it's gone. It's, good? Yeah. it's gone. In the mighty name of Yeshua, I command that to go now. Let go now. Check. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Father, I thank you right now in the mighty name of Yeshua. In the name of Jesus, I command it to go right now. Okay. One of, can I use this chair? You see his leg? One is longer. Look, come look. You see? You see? You see? You see one is longer. Yes? You see? Watch. Yes, the right one's shorter. This one's shorter. Watch. In the name of Yeshua. Right leg, grow. Right now. Ben, see. Wow. 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 It's the same. See? This? You see? It's the other leg. This is short. Which one's short? This one. No, the right, the right. You see his heels? Right here? You see? You see? Yes. You see it's short. So it's hurting his back. Because his back is hurt because his short leg. Watch. Ready? Okay, so I want you guys to all say this with me. Okay, say this. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We command this right leg to grow. We command this right leg to grow. Oh. It's this. It's this one. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right leg grow. Right leg grow. Oh my God. <laughs> Did you feel? Yeah, I feel it. 
Stand up. Check. It's okay. Now, put your hands. It's okay. Down here is better, but up here it hurts. Put your hands on his back, all you guys. Ready? Yeah, just like that. Okay. Okay, you ready? Now say this. Are you ready? In the name of Jesus. Back be healed. Pain get out. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Check. <laughs> Still earth. Is it better a little? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's better a little. A better a little. It's better a little. So if it's a one, it's okay. If it's one to ten, one being the best, ten being the worst, where is it right now? Six. Six. We're right in the middle. Let's pray again. Say, Spirit of Infirmity. Spirit of Infirmity. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We command you get out right now. In Jesus' name. Check again. Uh, take it a little. <laughs> little better. Yeah. One more time. Do it again. Now it's four. Uh, yeah, now it's a three. Yeah. It's better. Hey. I need everybody to pray with me. Ready? In the name of Jesus. Right now. We command this pain to get out. Command this pain to get out. You feel that? Yeah. Check. Uh, it's good. In the name of Jesus, we command this pain to go. Wow! Hey! Hey, remember, if you guys pray in the name of Jesus, people will be healed through you. So he listen, they don't understand. He asked me if this was magic. In, yes. In, eh, amen. So God the Father, I I I have encountered Jesus as the as as Yeshua. Yes, Yeshua has come. I was a drug addict for twenty two years. And thir Thirteen years ago I got shot at from three meters away. Yes. And I, and I met... And I, I met Yeshua. None, none of them hit me. None of them hit you? From ten feet away. And I met... I met Yeshua face to face. Because... Ah, you saw the Yeshu? Saw. Face to face. Um, exactly. you the Yeshu. I'm you. Uh, exactly. Exactly. And he changed, he changed my whole life in the blink of an eye. And I asked him to come and live inside of me. And he changed my heart. And now I get to travel and love people everywhere I go. Those kids are praying several times. And what will happen is next time someone's hurting, God will honor it because of his name. That was awesome. It was so powerful. Can I just everyone to just stand up right now? And we're just going to time of worship before I just get all of you to pray. But I want you to know that that God wants to use you to bring healing to people, especially right now in this season as you march out of these four walls of the church. As you're out there running your cells, I want you to know that, that you can see possibilities of praying for people and they can experience healing supernaturally. And I've experienced healing myself in my ankle because of my ankle, I actually, I do not need to go for IPPT for the past 10 years. But it was, well, I was always in pain, but just one, uh, you all, the guys must be, must be very envious of me. But, but after that right now, but after, I think there was one, one cell meeting that I had, they prayed for me and my ankle was okay and I was able to jump. Okay, so that's amazing. And I prayed for people who, who, who was, uh, sp has colorblind and they got healed. And I pray for people who's deaf in one year that experience about 70% healing. But of course, I also pray for people and there are some people who are not healed. But the thing about this is that we must recognize that God wants to use you 
that when you go out and preach the gospel, that is the work of God. When you lay your hands on people, well, and when you trust that God will heal them, I believe that God will heal them because God heals all diseases, all sicknesses. And today I believe that, that here in this youth service, we're going to experience some supernatural healing in the physical body. And I remember a few years back in, in the youth service, there, were, there was uh, one, one, there was one the youth who, who had long short leg and he grew. And there was one youth who came up to the stage, threw away the cast and he was healed. And, and even before we go into a time of just praying, can we just right now just worship the Lord here in this moment? And let's just begin to declare, let's just fix our eyes on Him. Let faith arise in our hearts and believe that first, the most important, and thank God that the most important healing that we have received is healing of our spirit. That, that by His wounds we are healed. That we can be connected with Him, that we can have a relationship with Him. And at the same time, later on, when you pray for your friends, we will see supernatural healing that will take place. And so what we're going to do. Okay, how many of you, you are sick? There's a pain in your body. Maybe you're having fever. There's a flu. There's pain in your back or somewhere, okay? So you can just lift up your hands as high as you can, all right? And this is what I want you to do right now, okay? I want the, the youth leaders here okay, to facilitate this. Get a cell group to pray for you. And youth leader, if you are having pain somewhere, okay, get your members to pray for you. And we're going to... Can we just... Just crowd around the friends who, who needs to be prayed for. Can we go to them right now? And we're going to declare and command in the name of Jesus that they will experience healing. And we're going to declare from Isaiah chapter 53 that by His stripes we are healed. Okay, everyone quiet right now. We're just going to pray. And later on, we will test out whether the, the, you have experienced any kind of supernatural healing. Okay, let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. And I want you all to pray for your friend. Huh? Okay, I'm here. I'm just praying on behalf of everyone. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command every pain to go in Jesus' name. I declare in the name of Jesus every pain in their body leave them right now in the name of Jesus. I declare that there's some of you here that, that there may some, be some fracture or there's some pain in your bones. I declare that the pain leave you right now that the Lord restores you. Lord, we claim your word that by your stripes, by your wounds because you have been whipped Lord, we are killed physically in Jesus name receive the healing right now in the name of Jesus 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 oh in the name of Jesus be healed right now in the name of Jesus be healed right now in the name of Jesus be healed right now receive the healing in the name of Jesus I declare that the Holy Spirit will just move in your body right now he receives that, that source of healing from the Heavenly Father and come upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, that there will be healing. And after you have been prayed, why don't you just test? And if you have experienced some form of healing, can you, can you just come to the front and te testify? Alright, can you just test right now the pain that is in your body? After being prayed for, how has it been? In Jesus' name, be healed. And if the, the pain is still there or there's no breakthrough, continue to pray. Alright, continue to pray. Yeah, just like in the video, the person, he prayed and there was some healing or there were, and he continued to pray. Right. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let healing take place in your body right now. Every pain leave you in the name of Jesus. Come on. This. Yeah. 
And just a show of hands, how many of you have experienced healing? Lift up your hands. You can just come to me right now. Okay, come, come, come. Push him like that. Okay, here come. Okay. Okay, we have a testimony here. Okay, let's hear from him. Okay, what was the pain in your body? Well, I had this very painful irritant in my eye. Well, my cellmates prayed for me and I could blink again, it was gone. Yeah, he could blink again because it's just now his eyes kept on closing and right now he can blink again. Can we just thank God? Thank God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah thank God. Woo! We have Can you share with us uh, what was the pain you experienced? And um, my thighs was very pain, but now I can uh, move a bit. Okay, so can you do it for us? Just now you couldn't really bend down, right? So can you show us that you can bend down right now? Yeah, can you stand up? Okay, can you just thank God for the healing? Come on, praise the Lord. Any more? Come on. Wow, just go. Okay, uh, just she mentioned that she cannot kick her legs. So just now, okay, if you, okay before that, what, what what can't you do? I mean, I just couldn't, you couldn't. I couldn't do anything. Oh, yeah. I couldn't do anything. Just like that. Okay. Yeah. And now I can move around. Okay, now you can kick around, move around. Can we just thank God? Woo! Come on, let's just praise the Lord. Any more? Any more? Okay, come, come, come. Okay, he mentioned that he has a back pain and he couldn't reach his toes, he couldn't really bend down. So this is what happened. And right now he's healed. So can you just share? The pain is gone, right? Yeah, the pain is gone. Come on, show us. Come on, praise the Lord. Woo! Amen. Praise the Lord. Any more? Come on. Just one or two more. Any more? Any more? All right. And this is just a demonstration. Okay, 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 let's continue to pray one more time. All right, let's just pray. Let's not. Let's just begin to pray for our friends right now, who's experienced seeing pain. Let's just begin to pray right now. Come on, come on. continue to pray. Let's just continue to pray. Lay your hands. Just declare healing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, one more, one more. Just come. Tennis elbow, I don't know. I go Google and search, okay. and they say I have tennis elbow. Uh, so, like every, uh, so I play badminton. So, like every time I swing, uh, my elbow or like, like swing my arm or bend my elbow will be pain. Okay. So, um, my cell, my cell members, they just break for me, and then like when I started bending it, then I, I don't know, I, I felt like something on my elbow. Then I tried and tested it out. Then it's like it was completely healed. Yes, he's completely healed. No more tennis elbow. You don't feel the pain in his elbow. Come on, just thank God. Come on. Woo! Well, basically, uh, my hip hurts. Then later, um, I googled it up. It was because of cellulitis, a bacterial infection, a type of bacterial, bacterial infection. So then later, my cell group prayed for me. Now the pain has like subsided a lot. 
So because I still need to go to doctor for like some medication thing, then like <coughs> it's completely healed. Yeah. Okay, can we just thank God? It's completely healed. Woo! Woo! Just thank God. You know, young people, I want you to know, hey, oh, there's some more, some more here, come, 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 more. No, there's a lot of healing that's taking place, yes. Oh, she's crying. Why? Can you share with us? I've suffered from depression for eight years. Okay. And I've just recovered from a suicide attempt. And I didn't come last week because my heart felt very heavy. Yeah. And I initially didn't want to come today. I actually felt like dying a few days ago again. But today I came and I just I felt very happy. No, I'm very happy. Yeah, like I came into the like this area, like my heart felt very heavy, but then like now I just Oh, praise God. Come on. What's what's her name? Christine. Christine. Christine, can can I pray for you right now? Come I just pray for you. Christine, come. Yes, Father, I just want to pray over my sister that Lord, when there's a healing in, in her spirit that you will also begin to heal her soul her emotions, her will, her mind Holy Spirit, come and feel her Lord, we surrender her, her soul into your hands The Holy Spirit, you will guide her and right now, in Jesus' name I speak healing into your heart right now that every pain that you experience Surrender it to the Lord. The Lord takes it away. As your eyes is being closed right now, I want you to know that, that Jesus is holding onto your hands. And He is helping you right now, walking you away from all the painful situations that you experience. And I declare in the name of Jesus that this spirit of depression will not come back to you anymore. I declare you are healed right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Oh, she's fine. I can tell you it's amazing that God really wants to heal us, not just physically, not just in our spirit, but also in our soul. And I want you to know that you can be the vessel that God will use when you go out there to pray for your friends because they will experience a supernatural healing of God in their lives. How many of you can say an amen today? Amen. And I, and I want to encourage all of you in your cell groups or even in school, if you know you have friends who's emotionally not doing well, who's physically sick, who needs to be prayed for, go to them and pray because I believe that God will use you to do a miracle work in their lives. How many of you can say an amen to that? Can I just close this time by just lifting my hands before the Lord? And I want, and I want to pray for every single one of you right now. Father, I just want to declare over all the young people today. I declare in the name of Jesus that today that they recognize that they will be awakened to the fact that when they go out to preach the gospel, signs and wonders will follow them. And I declare that you will use them as they pray for their friends. That prayer, there will be, you know, that somehow the, their friends will experience uh, miraculous uh, prayer being answered. And I declare that their friends will also experience supernatural healing. I declare they will go out in faith. And that though they may look like fools, but Lord, they will recognize that it is the power of God in their lives because they recognize they are being saved. This is living. This is living for you. To live a life that is supernatural. And I declare over every single young person here that they will experience signs and wonders because they are going out there in your name and I declare Lord in the name of Jesus I declare the anointing of the Lord be upon their lives because you have anointed every single one of them to preach the good news to heal the broken hearted and I declare that Lord that indeed 
there will be the, they will be the answer to all the sicknesses, whether it's a physical, whether it's emotional, whether it's spiritual, in the lives of their friends and in their family as well. So Lord, we want to give thanks and declare that today that the atmosphere has changed in this place. That we'll go out in faith and hunger for more of you in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, I just thank the Lord.